Hypocritical media and Dems have made Trump most malign president in history. By R. Emmett Tyrell, Washington Times, Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. I see from my private incarceration at home where I've been languishing for weeks that the New York Times is accusing President Trump of wasting as much as six weeks before taking action against the coronavirus. For weeks I've been dutifully washing my hands and have even taken extra care to wash my feet while Mr. Trump and most of the White House staff were dawdling. What were they doing wasting time? Did the White House dilatory behavior have something to do with impeachment? Was that somewhat of a distraction to the assistant president of in the West Wing? There was in the Times report only one mention of impeachment, and it was a fleeting mention. Otherwise, it was just business as usual in Washington with the White House ducking subpoenas and Congress thinking up ever more fanciful charges against the president. Is the House of Representatives still consumed with Russian collusion? How about the big fat American professor at Cambridge, Stephen Halper, or about poor Carter Page? Is Congressman Adam Schiff still coming up with whistleblowers of impeccable integrity? And is he engaged in his usual heavy-handed tactics with the Republican opposition? On December 18, 2019, the House drafted a bill of impeachment. On January 16, the House submitted the articles of impeachment to the Senate. Weeks passed. Senator Chuck Schumer had things to add. Mr. Schiff pounced on offbeat rumors. Finally, on February 5th, the Senate acquitted the president. Did all this hurly-burly distract the president and his aides in any way? I should think it did. If anyone dawdled, it was Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. She allowed the likes of Mr. Schiff to conjure up conspiracies that were so far-fetched that his constituents should vote him out of office this November 3rd or succeed from the Union. Then, when the House settled on its bill of impeachment, Nancy sat on the bill for four weeks, refusing to send it on until January 16th. And Democrats in the Senate were still were not satisfied that there should be an impeachment vote. Only when Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell ended this nonsensical travesty and put it to a vote was some sort of order restored. In the meantime, what was happening? Well, the coronavirus, we now know, was spreading throughout the world in early 2020 with little action being taken by anyone. Did any of the four mentioned misbehavior by the Democrats have anything to do with the president's action or inaction? I think it did. He now claims to have taken action on January 31st to end flights into America from China. Had he not taken action, it seems likely that thousands of more Chinese would have arrived here and brought the infection with them. Yet still the Democrats are going to hold President Trump accountable for taking no action. The Times has found a memo from Peter Navarro of the White House staff that the Times in its prolix style that is sprawled across three pages says the president should have read. The Times story is filled with information about the impending debacle. It mentions dozens of people, yet as I have said, it mentions impeachment only once in its three-page story. It charges the president with denying he read Mr. Navarro. The president says he is innocent, just as he said he was innocent of colluding with the Russians, with the Ukrainians, and all the other fanciful figures that populated charges against him these last three years. Donald Trump has now passed Richard Nixon as the most maligned American president in modern times. His enemies have been calling him names since about the time he came down the escalator at Trump Tower. They have called him a racist. They have called him Hitler. Interestingly, they have not called him Stalin. That is probably because so many of his enemies are conflicted by Stalin. What do they say? 
How about he made the kulaks run on time? No, no, that would be confusing Stalin with Mussolini. When the president stopped the inbound flights from China, Joe Biden called him a racist and also a xenophobe. Joe did not know what was the last word meant, but he called the president a xenophobe anyway. Of course, Mr. Trump is the duly elected president of the United States. He is not only the most slandered man to enter the White House, but he is the only man ever to have both the CIA and the FBI plotting against him. On November 3rd, it will be all over. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. Hi, my name is John Brooker. Please subscribe to this video. And please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God richly bless you, my beloved.